Eugene Molero with Transport Topics, and joining us today is Tom Trotter. He is Government Affairs Representative at the IFL-CIL. Tom, thanks for coming on the show. Well, Eugene, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. Uh, there's so much talk about um, infrastructure. Uh, we've got the Secretary of Transportation mm -hmm. saying that we're going to expect some sort of a long-term package either in a few weeks or down the road, ideally this summer. Members of, co uh, of Congress are talking about working on something after tax reform that focuses on infrastructure. Um, and there's some indication that the White House is going to have some sort of an announcement either next mm -hmm. week or, you know, within in the near future. Uh, let me talk to you about, you know, how where infrastructure ranks in your priority list mm -hmm. and also what you would like to see uh, the group in a long-term uh, infrastructure package. Yeah, it's a great question, Eugene. And, um, uh, you know, look, when we think of infrastructure, it's one of our top issues. Um, and certainly the needs are there. Uh, the uh, American Society of Civil Engineers just, they do a report every four years, and they yeah. just outlined where we're at right now, and the needs are great. Um, I mean, our, across the board, where you t talk about all sectors of our uh, infrastructure, I mean, you're looking at $4.6 trillion. That's, that's a right. lot of money. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of need. Um, you know, we get a D plus. And that's certainly nothing to be proud of. Uh, my kids came home with a D plus. I know from school I wasn't very thrilled yeah, about it. And yeah. so goes our you infrastructure. You can't get into some colleges with you, a D plus. That's grade. right. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, in the 20th century, you know, we we built the best infrastructure in the world, and we've been coasting on that. Um, you know, when when you when you have trucks or, and trains that can't get their goods across the country. I mean, yeah. trains that. Um, take as long to get from LA to Chicago as they do to get through Chicago. That's right. That's a problem. We got ports uh, with the post Panamax uh, ship ships coming in that aren't deep enough to handle you know the export of our goods and and the co commerce uh, uh, across the I internationally. Um, you know our FAA system is still operating on not under the new satellite based That's approach. Right. It's, it's all, yeah. you know, cutting into efficiencies. Um, and I mean the list goes on and on whether it's our harbors or our, uh, you know, highways and bridges, of course. Um, I mean, we just, there's a lot of work to do and, and um, you know, we're, we have the trained, skilled men and women. Um, I mean, for us, infrastructure is good for, there's key components. I mean, it done right, it creates good jobs, it grows the economy, it makes us more globally competitive, and it uh, raises the citizens' standard of living, quality of life. Um, so those are all issues, and, and it affects everybody. And whether you turn your tap on and you expect clean water to be com exactly, coming in, yeah. you know, you turn your light switch on, you're getting electricity That's when right. you want it. Yeah. Um, you know, and we still have to grow our broadband. What we see is the AFL-CIO, <coughs> you know, looking forward, what, what do we want to see in an infrastructure package? Well, one, we want to see robust public funding. Okay. I mean, this isn't going to be done you know, solely by the private sector. There may be a small part of that that can be a part of that and it has to be done right um, with high labor standards. Um, but, you know, uh, you n the funding is, is the key and we've been lacking on that. And, you know, we'll see what they come up with a plan. Uh, but it needs to be robust. Um, th there's so, so much to do uh, across the board. And, um, you know, so that we want to see that. We want to create good jobs, uh, put people to work. Um, and all the benefits that could flow with having an updated, um, you know, infrastructure systems. I, you know, we need these to be transi tra transitional. You yeah. know, I mean, w what we did in the 20th century with you know phones and electricity and interstate uh, highway system, we need to think about that in the 21st century. It's trying to modernize the time well, is now. We got autonomous technologies. Mm -hmm. There's a lot coming uh, yeah. coming at us, and we need to be prepared for that and lead the way in the world on that. Um, you know, you know, when you think about how do we, instead of doing things in a silo, we're going to build a road and we're going to do some train tracks and maybe a port. How do we make sure when we're doing those, we're thinking about how we connect those multimodal connectivity. Yeah. So when we're taking stuff uh, off trucks, on the trains and on the ships for export, you know, we, how do we think smarter about this? And how do we build things more resilient while we're doing it as well that they can withstand, you know, the storms and things that, that we're facing? So what is the best way to fund this new vision for the country's infrastructure. You said public funding. Um, we're hearing uh, from the administration a private component, mm -hmm. a public-private uh, partnership uh, enterprises to come in. Uh, should there be, what would be the ideal balance in your opinion? 
Well, uh, I think you can look at some of the work uh, the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee did when they had a uh, you know ad hoc committee look at public-private partnerships or P3s. Um, and look, there's a role, but they came to the conclusion, you know, up to seven only seven percent of the projects are eligible. When you look at um, um, you know public-private uh, funding going into infrastructure, first of all, it has to have a revenue stream. Uh, so it has to either put tolls up or have some kind of revenue stream, which then makes it more costly in the long run. Uh, there are uses for it as long as they're following, you know, good labor standards, not displacing good jobs with poor jobs, um, and you know, serving the public interest. Uh, it's got to be done right, and there are examples of that, and there's examples of it being done poorly too. But that only makes up, um, you know, a portion of the needs that are out there. So I mean, when you look at, I think our highways, bridges, and transit. I mean, these are user fee-based systems. If you're using the highways, yeah. you know, you pay a little bit on your gas tax. Um, and that hasn't, something that hasn't been adjusted since 1993. Yeah, exactly. And so it gets us less and less. And when you s look at the more recent legislation that they've passed um, on FAST Act, for example, for the hi well that last um, um, highway, highway transit bill, yeah. surface transportation bill, uh, y you know, they were rating, um, you know, they took money from the Federal Reserve account they have taken yeah. underground storage uh, fund yeah, uh, uh, right. cleanup funds the uh, so petroleum uh, reserve street yeah we yeah. sold some of that I mean nobody's rolled up their sleeves and gotten serious about how we fund going forward and that's and that's a problem and that's how we face what we're dealing with today commuters or you know watchers of, watchers of this show um, there is a cost to in action so even though you know raising it, there's proposals out there for 15 cents over three years, a penny a year for you know years out, out year, through the out years. Um, you know the cost that does cost people money, and I don't like paying more too. But the cost of inaction has reached a point where it's significantly higher than the cost of doing something. The D.C. area alone, motorists spend uh, cost them. Uh, I think the number from the ASC was um, 1,054 dollars a year. Yeah. And that's not getting them anything. What yeah. it's getting them is idling in traffic, wasting fuel, uh, you know, damage to their vehicles. A thousand dollars a year for nothing. Less and work productivity. Less productivity. Yeah. I mean, it's across the board a loser. Mm -hmm. And it's costly. Yeah. And that's not getting us anything. And each year that number will grow. So we have to, you know, think about, you know, taking care of our dollars and everything. But it, the cost of in action has become higher than the cost of action. So when we start building, um, you know, these uh, these new structures, and also as we uh, modernize our freight corridors, what is the concern with the labor market? Um, you know, what is your position uh, to ensure that you know the we still have people there, mm -hmm. you know, picking up the hammers and you know going to work every day? Well, look, we have some of the best training. Our affiliates have some of the best training apprenticeship programs in the world. They invest heavily in those. We, there's not a shortage of folks being able to, on the construction side to, you know, build those, uh, those facilities, you know, on time, on budget, with the right skills and, and the quality of workmanship, and, or, you know, men and women. Um, you know, we all, but uh, farther than that, we want to make sure that we're also growing the economy in other ways, that we're sourcing the products, the steel, and other components of this also from America. You know, he, the president said, hire America and buy America. Yeah, and you know we we believe in that too. And I think that's it's a becomes a virtuous cycle. You're creating, you know, you're building something, and then you're sourcing. It, you're creating other jobs, and then you know when it's done, if it's a transit system, you have the oper you know operation side of things. So um, you know the construction is a key upfront component, but after that, you know the maintenance uh, operations of these f these facilities is also very important, and to make sure that they're done right and like I said, high 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 road uh, labor standards, you know. That we're not we're abiding by community wage levels. We're not undercutting those. That we're protecting trans transit workers in the case of P3s or public sector workers. That we're not undercutting. We're not allowing bidders to come in and win a bid just by eliminating pay benefits and everything else. And we need to make sure that we're 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 using taxpayer di uh, taxpayer dollars efficiently and not undercutting jobs and and benefits. Exactly. And um and next week uh. AFL-CIO is going to be a, a major voice in what is known as Infrastructure Week. Yes, indeed. Uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is going to be there, ARPA, uh, ASHTO, a lot of the 
nearly everybody, all the players in uh, in infrastructure. Uh, give me your what is the what would you hope that the country takes away from infrastructure week? Well, I think we've done a good job. It's only been five years, and we've you know we've tried elevating uh, the talk of infrastructure, uh, and it's you know you listen to the campaigns and on the trail, we've done that. Uh, it's on the one of the first things people talk about when they say why you should elect me. Um, yeah, I'll but now fix that road, yeah, I'll fix that uh, butthole. And, and that's right. And so, what we need to now is do something about it. You know, yeah. the time to talk is there. So I hope that the events throughout the week continue educating the general public about what the needs are. Uh, you know, being specific to what's in their neighborhood or their community that needs whether it's water, you know, roads, bridges, transit. Um, you know, even our, you know, I mentioned our aviation systems, it's across the board. Um, and that, uh, you know, and put pressure on the politicians to do something uh, serious about it for the long, set the stage for the long term for our country. I know that um, Secretary Chow the, of Transportation is uh, scheduled to be at the launch event. Yes. Uh, anybody else from the White House? And if so, is there an expectation of a big announcement? Next week? Well, that, rema they, that remains to be seen, but okay. uh, yes, uh, Secretary Chow will be there. There may be another higher ranking uh, person attending. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um, but we expect a great week. It's a, a very well-rounded community involved. It's you know, obviously the builders and construction side, but it's also the manufacturers, you know, the uh, transit. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a well-rounded group. Um, you know, governors will be in coming into town next week. Yeah, the mayors. You know, cities, mayors. Um, it's a, so it's got everybody's attention. We have, I think, 250 groups now participating in events not only in D.C., but around the country, just to keep a raising awareness um, of what we need, to, what we should as a country be doing to move our, move our economy and our, our systems forward. Let's make that the last word. All uh, right. Tom, thanks for uh, joining us on uh, ttnews.com. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And uh, check out Capital Agenda on Tuesdays when Congress is in session. Thanks.